Hi everyone, Julie here again and welcome back to my YouTube channel. In this video I'm jumping back into DxO Photo Lab 7 and I thought I would do a video on what all the icons are. I had a question recently on how to do something so I thought I would put together this video for you. So welcome back. Um, please don't forget to like and subscribe and if you find this video helpful maybe even share it. So let's jump in. So I've got Photo Lab 7 open and I'm in the customize panel. Um, so I thought I would go through what's happening here. So we've got the basic compare so I can um, compare images. There's no corrections on this one. So let's just throw up a little bit of a correction just so that we can see a compare. So I did a pretty awful adjustment but if I hit on the compare I can see the before image as well as what I did to the edit. Um, so you can go through if you click that it's got um, reference images and things like that. I can also do a side by side um, so that is the top one and that is the correction preview. All of this is non-destructive at this particular point in time so you can play around with it and do whatever you want. Um, then there is of course the full frame or full preview so you can see it without any distractions. If you hit the escape key that will take you back into your photo lab 7 so if you hit on that that gives you your full screen viewer or you can press f11 or if you press f11 or the escape key it takes you back okay then we have got um, the fit on screen button I'm just going to take the compare off so fit on screen, so that's fairly self-explanatory. That fits your image back on screen. Then you've got one-to-one -one zoom, so you can zoom into 100%. So if you want to go through and fix a few things in here, you can. Or you can change that to 75% or 50%. So you don't have to, so if I go back to fit on screen, if I click one to one, it goes back to 100%. But if you change that to whatever you want, you can click in there as well. So you've got different options there. Then we have got the crop tool. So you can crop that to, you can show the grid or you can turn the grid off. Um, you can go to any aspect ratio or you can have it a custom ratio or unconstrained. So you can do it to a any particular size um, you don't have to have the aspect ratios picked. However, in saying that, the aspect ratio here are standard print ratios, so 7 by 5, things like that. 11 by um, 8.5 is pretty standard for magazines and things like that. So if you want to crop it, um, I think it's a great idea to get into the habit of doing um, standard aspect ratios and of course you can flip it so you don't have to have it that way you can flip your image you can do things there that way um, and just remember these are just quick access so you don't have to access them here you will find them in the palettes or panels over on the side um, once you're done you can hit close or you can hit reset and all that does is reset that crop. So if you want to come back in and do another crop, you can do that. Okay. And then close, we'll keep that crop. Then you have your white balance picker. So if you click on that and you want to pick a white balance, we can do that. 
Now you can also come in and you can set your temperature and your tint if you wish to. You can also come in and change it to um, various different white balances. So daylight, cloudy, tungsten, etc. So you can do stuff like that as well. Um, moving on to the next one. So this is your um, straight horizon line image. Um, don't panic too much at what the image looks like at the moment. But say I want to make sure that this fence or the gate that my model Charlie is leaning on um, is straight. I'm going to move that down to there and straighten it that way. You also have um, force parallels and things like that you can play with. The next one that we can play with is the retouch. Um, and this allows you to come in. And this is where I would suggest jumping in to say 100%. So that you can see any areas that you might want to retouch. And if you grab your space bar, that gives you your little hand that allows you to move around within your image. Now you can repair or you can clone. Um, you can set the feathering and the opacity on both of those. Um, so you've got different options that you can do. Um, you can change the size. So perhaps I want to get rid of this little fly away here and there's another here there now that didn't do such a good job so what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab that and I'm going to move it okie dokie this one here too Just going to move it so that lines up a little better. So I'm sure you get the idea. So that's using the clone. Um, the next one is for red eye, which they still put in software, but quite frankly, I mean, with today's cameras and today's speed lights, you don't really need to have the red eye but I guess it's there if you need it um, to me I wouldn't have put it up here on the main panel but it is there if you want it now once you've gone and done all that so I'm just going to compare now let's go to full fit to screen and compare that's what I had that's what I've got now and let's face it the before is much better because I've been playing with things that I shouldn't. So what do I want to do? Well, I've got reset and I've got apply a preset. So I really don't want to apply a preset at this point in time. I want to do a global reset and that resets everything in the image. Absolutely everything. So um, that sets it straight back. So of course from here I can go back and I can start... Um, re-editing my image, I can take it into um, Lightroom, I can take it into Nick Collection, I can take it into Film Pack and I can play with stuff like that. You've also got, if you want to go and do it, so if I want to um, go back to my retouch where I was there, my history allows me to jump back in and forwards in time and I can of course go straight back to when I imported it in. So there's a couple of different ways. That's what most of the buttons do. I'm not going to go through all the icons um, in this video. I probably could go back to um, doing one step by step. Um, I will just cover off what these basic panels do. So the light icon that is for your light palette so anything to do with your light your exposure contrast is all found there 
Then the next icon along is color. So anything to do with white balance, color grading, looks, um, split toning, anything that you want to do to do with color, you will find there. The next icon is detail. So you've got deep prime and things like that that you can use for denoising. Um, you've got removing chromatic aberrations. You can put unsharp masks. Your retouch tool is there as well and your red eye tool as well is there. So the next palette is your geometry palette. So that's where you will find your straighten tool, your crop tool, distortions and perspective tools. These are the ones that were up here. You will find them here as well. So the next panel is watermarks and effects. Um, I haven't really done added a watermark in. Um, perhaps that's another video to do. Um, there's different filters that you can use, grain, vignetting, things like that. You can add blur and so forth. You can add a frame, you can add texture, you can add light leaks. All of that can be found in the FX panel. And of course the local panel is the last one which allows you to do local adjustments to set areas via masks. So you will find all of that there. Um, if you have any other questions or if you're not sure where anything is, give me a yell and I'm happy to try and put another video together for you. So thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe. And I'll see you next time. Bye for now.